Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today I finally get to tell you what we at Nintendo Life think of Metroid Prime Federation Force. Ho oh, ho, it's about time. No waffling at all this time, let's just get straight into it and find out what this thing's about. For the past 30 years, Nintendo's given us hapless punters a wide range of Metroid games, although perhaps not as wide as we like. Every time, however, we've only seen this grim universe from one perspective, Samus's. And that's to be expected, she is the main character after all, but now we finally get to see the universe from an entirely different perspective, that namely of the standard soldiers of the Federation. It's a very bold move, but has it paid off? Taking place after Metroid Prime 3, the galaxy is appropriately in chaos. No last Metroids in captivity here. In an effort to be a little bit less useless at everything, the Galactic Federation approves Project Golem, an initiative to bring technological superiority over the space pirates. First time you pick up the game, you'll notice that thankfully, due to all the stylization and everything like that, the game is pretty damn pretty. Considering the borderline archaic hardware it's running on as well, performance is really impressive. Everything's at a stable 30 frames a second and the presentation makes you really feel that this is a Metroid Prime game. Far more than Hunters did on the original DS because that had even weaker hardware. Obviously. Things handle well as well, there are two control options to choose from with various other minor tweaks available. The default is extremely similar to the first two Metroid Prime games on the GameCube, and the alternative is much closer to modern twin-stick shooters. You can also use the system's gyro to precision aim in true Splatoon style if it takes your fancy. And it should. Regardless of your control system though, a more important question is, are you going to be playing with friends or are you going to be playing entirely alone? That's right, as we've said before, Federation Force is a perfectly substantial single-player experience as well as a multiplayer one. Whilst teamwork is encouraged, you're never put into a situation where simultaneous actions are required beyond standing on switches to open a door. And if you're on your own, you just step on that one switch and that, that's it, you're done. There are 22 missions on offer, which is a bit slim pickings at first, but you do have the option to replay these missions in a significantly tougher mode after completion. Given that one or two of the earlier missions are woefully easy for any Metroid fan, this is a very welcome addition. If you do have enough chums to shake a stick at, though, you will want to take advantage of the co-op play that this game has to offer. It's great as a single player experience, but multiplayer adds a whole other dimension. The difficulty doesn't change dynamically either, so this is perfect for those who are new to the series to get a bit of a leg up. It also allows you to take full advantage of even more of the various Orcs ammunition that's available to you. These include missiles, health packs, super missiles, freeze rays, and all manner of other handy dandy little whatchamacallits. As each player can only carry so much of this, having more players means more tactical decisions about who gets what, rather than being limited to only your own mech's weight limit. You can further mix things up in the game with one of my personal favourite parts of the whole experience, mech mods. These things can be found scattered around missions and suitably change up how your mech behaves. Additional defence? You can have it. Carry more stuff? Boom, it's yours. Want to run around at full speed whilst holding a charge shot? You can do that, but you'd best be at full health, otherwise it won't work, Zelda style. Coupling the mods with various paint schemes that are purely visual and nothing else means that customization is a cornerstone of the game. We just wish there was more of it. As nice as it is to have these little bits of individuality, we do feel that there was maybe more that you could do to make your mech stand out from the crowd, even if it was just purely cosmetic. But it is the most customization we've ever had in a Metroid game, so it's a start. It's also not that easy to communicate with other players, which in a co-op game can mean the difference between success and failure. You have these preset soundbites that you can shout out with thankfully more variety than Triforce Heroes, but if you're planning to play online with friends, we really recommend you use Skype or some other similar voice chat system. System. It's not an elegant solution, but it's a solution nonetheless. But once you're done with the campaign, is there anything to bring you back to the game for more space pirate deliciousness? Thankfully, yes! Besides the previously mentioned harder difficulty, every mission also ranks you based on your performance, and you have a score to reflect that. Additional points are awarded for things like headshots, destroying multiple enemies at once, and any other variation beyond the standard bang bang you're dead motif. That, and you've also got Blast Ball, which won't hold your attention for that long, but it's a nice little aside. Metroid Prime Federation Force may not be the direct sequel that many were hoping for, but it still manages to stand up as its own game, and most importantly, it's worthy of the Metroid Prime name. That's why we are proud to give Metroid Prime Federation Force an 8 out of 10. It's not a perfect experience, but the polish and clever design of how it all works means that it's a really enjoyable experience. It solves the problems that Hunters faced on the DS and breathes new life into the lore and the greater universe that Metroid resides within. If you want, you can read our written review over on Nintendo Life. Just simply click that card up there or the link in the description if you're that way inclined. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you lock onto that subscribe button as seductive as you can, and be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo related content. Thank you again for watching, bye bye. <laughs>
You're a creaky little bastard, aren't you? Isn't that? It's 11 pounds well spent though. What this thing's about? Better. Get to see it from the perspective of the far more common standard foot so oh, what are they called? Means they're really, 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 I need to draw more breath. <laughs>